In the opening scene, we see a group of friends going on different dates with different men. Some are having the best times of their lives making out on a boat cruise. Some are at a fancy place having fun while some experience a boring date with these men. Callie finds this to be very frustrating as she thinks she deserves good men, but she keeps getting the terrible ones. Callie is a content creator who shares moments of her life on social media, where she has quite a fan base. She steps out with her friends to a nightclub where they are having so much fun. She shares her horrible experience with them which leads to a session of them advising her to put the kind of energy she wants in a man into the world. In the course of her hangout with her friends, she meets someone and the night turns out to be another date night for her. At the end of her date, the both of them stand outside waiting for an Uber to come to pick them up when Callie excuses herself to go pee, because she's really pressed. She walks down the alley to pee in a quiet spot. She gets into a squabble with a guy who pees on her accidentally and Callie refuses to miss the opportunity to hurl insults at him. On getting back to the spot where her date is supposed to be waiting for her, she discovers that the young man is no longer there. She asks around and realizes that he left without her and now she has to find her way home all by herself in the middle of the night. She walks back to the guy she was insulting and requests him to call an Uber, her Uber, because her phone battery is empty and her friends are gone. After all the curses she hurled at him, he concentrates on his bike and informs her that he can be of help to her. Callie turns back and murmurs some words insulting him one more time. Some minutes later, he walks behind her as she has no other option than walking him. The duo gets into some little argument before they finally start discussing and he introduces himself as Leo. Callie pleads with him to take a video of her, so she can tell her fans how she got abandoned by her date. Leo thinks it's weird that she posts her life on social media. They chat the way down to Callie's house and she thanks him for walking her home even though their conversation was really weird. At least she's safe. Leo turns and takes his leave without saying a word to her. Immediately she gets on her bed, looks through her page, and then sets up her phone's alarm to wake her up in the morning. The next morning, Callie's friends teasingly ask her about the guy from last night as they show her the footage from the camera at the entrance of their house. She tells them not to get their hopes high because Leo lives on a boat and doesn't have a phone. However, she smiles cutely and reveals to them that her second date requests her pictures. Callie makes excuses for him and Dessa agrees she gives him another chance but the others cut the both of them short almost immediately. They remind Callie that she shouldn't make excuses for boys. Callie sulks as she is scared that she's going to be alone forever. Later in the day, Callie sets up her ring light and ready herself to make a video for her page with the tortilla chips and guacamole she ordered. After editing her videos, she rushes off to join her mom, Margaret, for their family therapy session. When she enters the office, she apologizes for keeping them waiting due to traffic. Much to her surprise, Bella, who is the girlfriend of her brother, Emmett, is present at their therapy session. She doesn't think it makes any sense but Emmett reminds her that their mother brings Dan who isn't a member of their family which means Bella can join in as well. The whole family starts creating a ruckus arguing about Callie's decision to stay away from her family despite being unmarried. Dan steps in and suggests they take a deep breath. The therapist agrees with him and requests they lay a hand on their chest while drawing some deep breaths with their eyes closed. By the time they are done, they open their eyes to meet the emptiness of Kaylee's seat. Bella assures Margaret that she will never leave in the manner Callie did. Meanwhile, Leo is on his boat doing some cleaning with his earphones plugged into his ears while nodding his head to the rhythm of the music as he works. A colleague of his interrupts him, reminding him that they are having a charter and he would have reminded him if only he had a phone. Leo hurriedly grabs a shirt and readies himself for work. As they walk along the dock, others soon join them for a little chit-chat, and they inform Leo of the lady who came looking for him last night in search of his boat. Callie records herself, informing her fans that her second date requested nude pictures from her, and now she's thinking of giving him a chance for another date. Minutes later, she is all set to meet up with her second date at the restaurant. She waits but he doesn't show up, with the looks of things she was getting stood up as he was 15 minutes behind schedule. The waiter comes to offer her water for the second time and reconfirm if her date will be coming. She smiles as she informs Callie that there is a 90-minute limit on the table but there's no need for her to rush. Callie thanks her as she walks away but her eyes catch Leo in the bar section. She quickly picks up her phone and pretends to be busy on it. Leo sees her and smiles to himself as he walks towards her. He sarcastically asks if she's the lady who peed on him. He notices the empty chair and suspects that her date might not be showing up so he decides to take a seat and join her. She attempts to leave him there but he finds a way to make her come back and sit with him. They soon start chatting and she reveals what leads her into coming for a second date with the guy and now she might just be eating with him instead. In the course of their conversation, they get into a little debate based on Callie's decision to eat certain food because she thinks all eyes are on her as an influencer, so she has to keep up with her life on social media. 
Leo already has a notion that she's being fake. So, in the process of talking her into doing things for herself because most people don't care, they get into an argument and she points his attention to the guy filming her to show him how important she thinks she is. Leo gets up to confirm her claim by walking over to the guy to see for himself. Callie hears as the man reveals that he turned on his flashlight so he can properly see his menu. To her surprise, he walks over to another lady asking if the lady knows her. Unfortunately, the lady doesn't know her. Leo comes back to join her after driving home his point. He reveals that most people only think about themselves so there's no need for her to care so much about their opinions. Callie thinks otherwise because she intends to have her show someday, so, what she's currently doing is worth it. After all, one has to be someone before they can be someone. Leo stares at her, speechless, and then calls the waiter to take his order. He listens to her talk about her social life all through their meal until she finally asks, for her phone back. He concludes that she's a phone addict and she can barely hold a conversation because her phone is always there to distract her. The whole thing about how a phone can make people distant from those around them is the exact reason he doesn't have a phone. He hands over her phone and challenges her to go a day without it. He writes down his invitation for another date which she will come to without her phone. Kelly thinks it's going to be an easy piece for her, so she accepts the challenge and thanks him for making her have a fun dinner. She agrees to pay the bill since Leo isn't even supposed to be sitting over the table with her. Afterward, they bid each other farewell. Kelly shows the paper to her friends on getting home and they all insist she go on the date with him, especially since it'll improve her page which seems to be dwindling. They argue back and forth about it because Callie refuses to accept that she normally takes advantage of guys to grow her page, as they all claim. However, she thinks they are wrong and Leo will never agree to that deal unless he's unaware of it. The next day, she makes a record of herself recounting how she and Leo peed on each other in the alleyway and now, she will be going on a phone-less date with him. In the next scene, Callie and Leo are pedaling their duck-shaped boat across the lake when a crazy couple approaches and collides with them with their boat. They stare at the couple arguing furiously. The man suddenly attempts to drown the both of them in the lake while they watch in disbelief as the lady splashes water on them. Minutes later, the couple starts kissing to their surprise. After the whole drama, Callie takes Leo to where she parked her car. She hands him a shirt in her car trunk so they can change out of the wet clothes before going on a stroll. Minutes later, they are on their way walking all around the dock area, and then the park area. They spend the whole day together getting to find out interesting things about themselves. Callie occasionally provides some sarcastic answers like explaining who a mother is to Leo like he's someone from outer space. He takes the joke and goes along with her. In the course of their conversations, Leo begins to understand that Callie thinks of herself as a self-sufficient woman, the typical independent who can do everything for herself so she sees no need for a man in her life. But then, he still wonders why she cares so much about what people think about her. Instead of living her best life not caring or bothering about people's opinions on her choice of lifestyle might be. Callie on the other hand, feels she doesn't know Leo because they've spent hours together and she still can't say she knows him or anything tangible about him. She spends more time asking about him, his personality, and also talking about herself. Callie gets back home and sets up her ring light after changing into something more relaxing. She wouldn't miss the opportunity to update her fans about her phoneless day with this boat guy. She shares that it wasn't as terrible as she had thought it would be but then it turned out to be like the normal date. She admits that she thinks Leo has some kind of trauma because he doesn't like talking about himself like he completely avoids the topic. Meanwhile, Dissa stands beside Callie's door and watches her friend talk on camera. She smiles hearing her friend confess that she might be in love with Leo. Callie's friends are in the living room seeing a TV show when a knock comes in. Peyton gets up to check who it might be, and to his surprise, it's Leo. She shouts out Callie's name but doesn't get any response. While waiting for Callie to come out Leo decides to chat with her friends. They start bombarding him with questions regarding his decision to reject modern technology until Callie comes out dressed as a peach. Leo thanks her for coming out with him the other day, which is part of the reason he came to check on her. He wants her to come out with him again but Callie is not ready to step out of the house. Peyton introduces himself to Leo and informs Callie that he got her a gift. Leo suddenly remembers the present. He hands it to her and calls it dumb but she rebukes him for calling it dumb. Her friends quietly watch her try to convince Leo to go out another time with her until Momo cusses her from where she is listening to their conversation. She yells at Callie to go out with Leo. In a few minutes, Leo arrives at the venue with Callie. He blindfolds her and leads her through till he gets to where the table is. Upon removing the blindfold she gets surprised. He had prepared a table for them on the stage of a theater. She thinks he wants to propose to her because regular dates include coffee at a cafe, or ramen but not a theater. He interrupts her and reminds her to keep her phone away almost as soon as she brings the phone out to record the scenery. He wants to make sure that he takes her on a date to a place where she will know for sure that nobody is staring at her. Callie turns and stares at him in appreciation for a few seconds. Emotions kindle between them as they reach out for each other's hands and in no time, they end up in a kiss. Subsequently, Callie and Leo spend more time together exploring more romantic dates which she never forgets to carry her followers along. 
Her page continues growing as more people like and watch her videos. Their lovely moments continue until they finally seal their love in some moments of sexual intimacy on Leo's boat. After a heated session of pleasure, Callie is talking romantically on the bed with Leo when a lady walks in carrying a bottle of mythic blend that Leo likes. Mina walks in on two of them talking dirty. She yells at Leo and reminds him of how he forcefully made her fall in love with him. She blames her sister for getting into her head and making her believe Leo is a perfect guy. Enraged Mina throws the bottle of mythic blend on the bed and walks out angrily. Leo tries to explain that what he had with Mina was simply casual but Callie feels he deceived her. They sail back to the dock and she decides to talk about the ladies he's seeing. She gets off the boat and intends to take her leave before she starts reading meaning into things that she shouldn't. He tries to stop her from leaving, but it doesn't work out. Then, he sails the boat to a spot he usually goes to clear his head from time to time. After several minutes of keeping to herself, Callie comes back to join Leo where he sits navigating through the water. She asks why he comes out there to sit and clear his head like some little boy. He reveals how messed up he became after he got out of his relationship three years ago. She feels three years is a long time and he should have gotten over it by now but, Leo seems to be finding it difficult to get over his ex. The duo soon gets over their issue as they converse. Leo is surprised upon hearing that Callie the phone addict doesn't know where her phone is. He jokingly tells her that her 100k followers might be worried about her. But she laughs and corrects him that it's now 2.1 million followers. She reveals her mother must have called her a thousand times out of worry that she might be having another anxiety attack. Leo is surprised to find out that she experiences anxiety attacks, so he offers her listening ears if she wants to talk about it. She appreciates him for allowing her to interact. The time she has spent so far has been eventful, as well as fun. The next morning, Callie joins Leo in front of the boat. They've sailed back to the dockyard and Leo is scribbling some things down on a sheet of paper. She takes a seat in front of him and he requests she adjust her chin. He hands her the paper in his hand. To her surprise, he made a drawing of her which he would want her to remember him by. On second thought, she thinks it's crazy because the drawing will only remind her of herself so, she suggests he keeps it with him to remind him of her as she sails off into the night, never to be seen again. She drops the drawings inside the cabin, and just then, a message pops on her phone. She informs him that she has a surprise for him right away. Moments later, Leo finds himself in between Callie's family members and their therapist in front of him. Emmett argues why Callie brings her boyfriend to their family therapy session, and Margaret supports Emmett's argument. Leo attempts to run out but Callie reaches out to him just in time, urging him to relax and take a seat. Then she turns to the therapist. Callie reveals that Leo had a heartbreak three years back which he hasn't moved on from and now he keeps multiple women. Leo reveals that his ex was a very good woman and Callie's family immediately assumed his ex is deceased, and he probably eliminated her. Leo sees that the discussion is heading nowhere so he gets up and walks outside briskly. Later, when Callie gets home, she shares on her page her confusion about the possibility of being with someone who is not emotionally available, especially as she's even willing to try. She thinks it might be her toxic trait, but who knows. In the evening, Callie walks down the dock towards Leo's boat. His colleagues see her and welcome her in. Dusty confesses that Leo has never introduced any of the women who came to his boat and she's the first. Callie smiles in a rather teasing way and appreciates Leo for doing the honor. She soon hands him a sketch of him she made, so he can remember her by. Leo receives it and shows it to the others. It's terribly drawn but he loves it anyway, and thanks her for even attempting. She wonders why they are drinking on the boat and Leo reveals that it's his therapy sessions. They all make a toast to therapy and get engrossed in conversations, music, drinks, and dancing. In the course of the fun moments, Callie enters the restroom in search of something. To her surprise, she finds a box containing memories of Leo's ex. She looks through the items but she soon gets interrupted by Leo who comes calling for her. She quickly arranges everything and places them back in order. The next day while Leo goes about his cleaning routine for his boat, Callie informs him that she's unwell. She suggests she visits the rehab, and he compliments her performance the previous night but she claims to be unaware of the happenings of the previous night. She offers to help him scrub the boat floor. Some ladies walking by the dock area recognize her and ask to confirm if she's Cali Girl on social media. The lady exclaims and reveals that she's an ardent follower and lover of her page. She notices Leo and requests to know if he's the boat guy. He is taken aback by everything the lady is saying so he pleads for her to let him have a look. He is shocked to discover that Cali has been uploading information about them on her page and he's totally unaware of it. He appreciates the lady and bids her goodbye. Callie apologizes and admits that she was drunk the day she made that video. He realizes that she's documenting him and he should have known better because it is what she does. He suggests she leave but he was taken aback by her revelation that she went through his stuff and found the items belonging to his ex, which he kept for memory's sake. In a rush, he explains the circumstances behind why he kept stuff belonging to his ex and how bad he was. 
But now, he's trying to make things work right with her, but her self-centeredness gets in the way. The duo gets into a little squabble raising voices at each other until Callie walks out of his boat and he sets sail immediately. Meanwhile, while they are arguing a passerby takes videos and pictures of them shouting at each other. On arriving home, Callie walks stomping her foot noisily as she crashes into a sofa. She tells her friends to pretend like nothing is going on with her while she nurses her emotional injury. She takes up her phone to divert her attention but she is in for a shock. She sees a video of her and Leo arguing, and she screams out loud on seeing the negative comments coming from people. Now she wants her friends to care because she just got dumped and she's being cancelled. She shows them the video. At the dock, Dusty comes over to Leo's boat to talk about what's going on between him and Callie but Leo isn't ready to talk about it. He curses Leo for not realizing that she is special. He tells him to go get a phone and watch her videos. He becomes furious realizing that Dusty has been watching Callie's videos and he knew about it all this while. Dusty tries to advise Leo like a father would. He suggests the young man let go of his ex and start taking care of himself properly, else he will start missing the very good things in front of him. The next day, Callie joins her mother and Bella for their workout session. Margaret complains about Callie's attitude and as usual she isn't paying attention to her mother because she's on her phone. Margaret gets angry and walks out. Confused, Callie seeks the trainer's opinion to know if she is becoming too addicted to her phone. The trainer laughs, asking to know why she comes for the session since she doesn't do anything aside from being on her phone. Callie visits her mom to apologize. She sees her sipping a drink so she joins her. Soon the mother and daughter get over their issues and they laugh and make jokes about Bella's attitude and slang. Later that evening, Leo gets a phone and he watches Callie's videos one after the other. He smiles and laughs at intervals. Meanwhile, Callie sits in the living room with her friends. She watches as they are all engrossed on their phones and she's just there. She gets up to go make one of her horrible arts with the paint Leo got her. Thinking about how things have been in the past few days Callie tears up as the emotions set in. Leo on the other hand, thinks about the whole drama deeply trying to wrap his head around it. Callie steps out of the house. She is in the process of editing her last video for the boat boy story when a text comes in interrupting her. She replies to the message to confirm her suspicion and to her surprise, it turns out to be the boat boy Leo. They send several texts to each other admitting their fears and vulnerability and finally, they can sort things out between them. They eventually reconcile their differences and finally understand the world through the eyes of each other.